My name is Ron Wasserman, and I worked on Power Rangers from its uh, inception in mid-1992 until the end of 1995. Then they'd have me back several times to sing on themes and maybe do some of their other little shows, but by that time I was working at home, I was no longer going into the studios there. Go! Sometime in 1992, they go, okay, we have this new thing. We are trying to get a slot for this show, and it's called the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So I remember that night calling, going, Morphin? Not morphine, right? It's like, no, morphine, you idiot. I'm like, okay, it's hard not to say morphine, but okay. So uh, they said, we need a theme tonight. And I went, Okay. Go, go, the only suggestion they gave was, he said, if you can use the word go, we've had a lot of luck with that because we'd written go, go, gadget, go, you know, way back in the day for Inspector Gadget. And I went, okay. So I remember I had some uh, basic guitar sounds I had developed, and I remember sitting there going like, I'm going, I'm going to write this for adults. So I'm just going to blast through this thing. That riff came, the quick ship came, the Eddie Van Halen stuff, the triplet thing came, the drums I was just, you know, all done on keyboard because I don't play any guitar. So I banged out that theme in two and a half hours and on the original, and I'd never sung on anything recorded on a mic. Maybe a, a few of those earlier things as guides. So I did it. So my high harmony is, if you listen, it's really flat. But, you know, back then we're recording the tape. This is pre-technology where you go, done. So uh, next day I get a call and they go, well, they had a meeting with Fox and they absolutely, like, they went nuts over the, th they're nuts. They think it's the best theme ever. And I go, great, who are we thinking of getting to sing it? And they went, no, they're nuts about it. You're the singer now. So all of a sudden, I am now the star composer at Saban. So I'm starting to develop, and I told them, I said, I'm doing rock score. I am not, I am going to do this hard rock it is going to work and they went go i said except for you know bulk and skull I'll do something silly if it's silly so there was no intervention whatsoever I just knew it had to be fast tempo. But each one of those songs, and in those days, I had from just my upbringing a certain amount of angst. So that anger would come out. But each one of those songs, every single one of them, is pretty much specifically about my life. <laughs> So let's look at fight. Fight was really about, I am going to fight and make something of myself. A song like We Need a Hero is the saddest song ever written because prior to my time, there was always these icons that kids could look up to, you know, whatever, Lone Ranger, whatever, and that was all gone. Now the Power Rangers, I think that's why it was such a success. You had five that kids were looking up to.
the average day scoring for Power Rangers to the best of my memory back then. All the execs left at 6, so I'd try and show up by 6.15, 6.30. <laughs> Go into my Studio A. Back then, to load my samplers, they were on optical drives. So that meant taking my Kurzweil samplers, and you have these external boxes with these giant drives on them, plug them in, hit load, 25 minutes to load the drum and guitar sounds, everything I'm going to need, the bulk and skull stuff, which literally today on my home system would load in under 15 seconds, maybe even less. But do that. Go BS with my sound effects friends or go talk to the music editor a bit. Come back, pull up picture, and never view the episode first. Right from the start, I always had the time code right when it starts. I have my keyboard, everything was off to the side then, so I'm here, here. I have to look up here at the monitor. Go. Because I know what sounds I'm starting with, and I got it down so much that sometimes I could look at a one minute scene, I'd go, tempo should be 163, set it in, score the entire thing, go back into the MIDI files, fix any clams, any mistakes I made, boom, bounce it off to DAP machine one, DAP machine two, to the, to the ADAP machines, the Tascam ADAP machines, do that and move on to the next thing and slate it with a title, write it down in the book, what the name is and where it goes in the show. That's the terrible part. Um, and that would go on until the daily goal was hit. The hard part would be when I would score the nine minutes that I knew the music editor couldn't edit. Let's talk season two by then. And then go, okay, now we need a song. Go. Luckily, most of the time, they would say, look, you don't need to do a three minute song. They just need to be a minute. So that makes your life a lot easier. When we did the album, which was originally going to be all full length songs with zero dialogue, then I extended a lot of them. And it was done and it was perfect. And then they came back in, they go, bad news. People are scared, it's too heavy. So we're having uh, go see our dialogue uh, editor, have him give you just a bunch of sound bites. He goes, and put dialogue over the entire thing. He goes, soften the blow of the entire thing. He goes, because we are scared that if it comes out as just a rock album, um, we're going to get, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> What is it, Look at the viewing globe. Bolt and Skull are being attacked by putties. Ay, ay, ay. When I was working in the studio, the way Aaron Waters was invented is my middle name is Aaron. My last name is Wasserman, which means waterman in German. So I took Aaron Waters. And you get frustrated a lot, especially uh, in those days, you're dealing with two two inch tape machines, a 30 inch, you know, big Sony two cathode ray television and something called a link system. So you may sing a line and then you hit rewind and you wait for them to rewind. And then there's 20 seconds pre-roll and you wait for everything to lock and you get the green light and then you can hit record and do your line. Pure hell, pure torture. So I went, I need to come up with the singer name that I can yell at when he's screwing up and that we can argue with each other. And this is not like psychopath stuff. This was just more to pass the time. So Aaron Waters gets invented. White Ranger Tiger Power White Ranger Tiger Power White Ranger Tiger Power 
that created some confusion, but the internet is now developing a bit. So, you know, kids are clever. They kind of get it. I'm telling the story in interviews. I've invented this guy. It's me. They're like, that's kind of funny. <coughs> then one day Saban goes, we're going to call you the Mighty Raw. I went, why? We have the producer, writer, we have the artist. They go, because it sounds exciting, Mighty Raw. I'd like to play my latest song for all my fans out there. It's called Green is a Goner, and I wrote it for you. The only one who's a goner around here is you. When I was a kid, my friend Robert and I were friends, well, he, he more so than I, were friends with a band called Chicago. And so we wrote a letter to the keyboard player. And he wrote back and said, we're flying from, I can't remember, New York to Los Angeles, got your letter, just wanted to say thanks. He answered uh, some stupid ass question we'd answered and he mailed it back. And I said, wow, I would always do that. So in 1992, when Ron Kanan, the music guy said, he goes, there's a forum about you on Power Rangers. So I remember going home that night and saying, okay, I've got to learn about AOL. I've got to find this forum. And so I decided I will answer every single email I ever get. Now, a lot of times it's the same questions. And there are a few times where I think some of them are being a bit lazy. And I'll say, just go to the website. It's there. I, I, I don't need to answer what I'm working on now again. It's, it's right there. But I've answered every single one. I truly am humbled and so appreciative of them taking the time because that's the most valuable gift anyone ever gives you is time. So they want to know something, I'll make time to answer it. It's perfectly fine. Even if I have explained it 50 times, 100, sometimes 300 times, 3,000 times. <laughs> it's okay. Lots of other shows that have done great, but there's been nothing that really compared to that. So it's a, it's just hard to explain how great it is to have been such a big part, especially when some bands have written and said, you were the influence, and so we did a rock thing, and now we're signing a deal because of it. I mean, it's just like great. It was a gift given to me, and I got to give back. I didn't just keep it to myself. So that's the best part of it.